interview and job search strategies that work. And, you know, a couple individuals uh, have relatives overseas and they ask me, um, hey, could you, you know, talk about um, um, how would how would somebody get overseas to the States, basically, right? Uh, for instance, they ask, they have a student, they know a person who uh, goes to college and wants to work in the States. So I'll tell you how that works. That's um, that's a J-1 visa is what it is, right? Um, okay, so let's talk about that a little bit. So the, the J-1 um, is like a temporary work visa, basically, right? So how it works is students in, like, say, the junior or senior year college, um, they'll apply and come to the States and work, you know, whatever field they're in. For instance, let's say they work as um, a chef. They're going to culinary school, right? overseas somewhere and then they come to the states and they work in the same field maybe for a hotel or uh, a resort something like that so here's how it works it's called um there's a form so you would go to co a high college and you would talk to the um they have an agreement with uh like a a, a company in the states and they're like almost like a sponsorship basically they're on the um Department of State's website, they have a list of all the individuals, or I'm sorry, companies that can basically sponsor an individual come to the States. So it's called a student and exchange visa or visitor information system, right? It's called a SEVIS is what they call it basically, right? And the forum is called a DS-2019. So typically how it works is, there is um, a college in whatever country you live in. They have a tie-up with like an agency there, a local agency, right? That local agency has, um, you know, a partnership basically with uh, a, one of the Department of State qualified or approved um, sponsors in the state. And that's how it works. So usually the fee for the DS-2019, it's a form to fill out, right? It's about a thousand bucks, roughly, something like that. And what you're after is you're after getting paid. It's almost like a paid internship is actually what it is, really. And so um, you you are responsible for paying for the flight, whatever the flight costs. You're responsible for paying the other fees. Um, for instance, there's a there's a fee uh, that you have to pay like a local consulate um, to actually go there, you know, to do the interview. There is a registration fee for the form or filling it out. Um, of course, there's a J-1 visa fee. Um, and, of course, you know, you get your appointment at the U.S. consulate, right? And um, so, you know, basically you can expect to pay five grand, roughly, something like that. Like just plan on paying $5,000 uh, for your relative to come to the States to work for you know, four to six months, basically. There's also a, um, there's also a medical that you go through as a student that you have to get uh, prior to coming to the States for this. So what, what the DS-219 form looks like, basically, it has like your name, uh, country birth, citizenship, your, um, uh, the primary state of, uh, site of authority. That's where you're going. That's who the company is, like in, New York, there's one company, I can't think of top my top my uh, head the name, but they're going to be the ones that's going to sponsor you, essentially. So the 2019 is going to have that name of the um, the sponsorship in the, in the state, whoever they are. So when you, um, when you get to the states, you can apply for a, um, um, a social security number, basically, right? Social Security number, and you need that to pay taxes because even though you're from a you know a foreign country, you come here, you pay taxes. So you have to pay taxes on the income that you earn. Um, so this is kind of an advantage to you, right? Basically, so let's just say you come here to the states and you have a um, Social Security number. Well, you can then get a bank. And you can get uh, other things. You can get probably start a, a business if you desire to do that. And just kind of establish yourself in the States, even though you're only here four to six months. And kind of set it up to where 
you plan on coming back to work or to visit, let's say, right? So you have some business or some reason that you come back to the States, essentially. Um, a lot of individuals, what they do is get here on a G1 visa, and then they usually end up marrying uh, individuals, other individuals here locally, and then they turn in, they take that J1 and they uh, convert it into a, um, um, like a green card or a spousal visa, basically. And there's a fee, of course, involved in that. I will say that the the one thing that when you get here from another country and then, you know, um, you come here and you're here for four to six months or whatnot, right? What, how do you get a job here or how do you get a job after, right? You go back to your home country and then you want to come back. That's usually how it works. So while you're here, you for a job. Like I talk about in this thing, IT, for instance, let's say you come here to be a chef, whatever, right? And you know that your skill set here is, is, you know, may or may not be um, what employers are looking for or may or may not be how to get here, basically. Let's say, for instance, a programmer. A programmer is high in demand, basically, right? A lot of companies like Google, Facebook, um, want to hire people from overseas to come here to work. So if that's a... If that's what you want to do, that's the field to get into. So, for instance, you come here and you you work. Take you know take take a weekend, take you know four or five hours and research those those jobs, those companies. How can you come back here to the states to work permanently? Right. Um, if that's if that's your goal, anyway. So, thank you very much for listening to this podcast and have a great day.